Hey everybody, this is your teacher, Bill Blaine. It's been a while since I've talked to a lot of you guys. Anyhow, this video right here, we are focused on Unit 3, okay? Unit 3, according to AP, is titled National Income and Price Determination. Um, generally, I kind of have my approach to teaching uh, this course. However, in these videos, I'm going to start really aligning myself strictly with the AP test, okay? Usually, the overlap is like 99%, so everything works out just fine. But I'm going to try to be even more in alignment with the AP course right now, okay? So I'm going to name Unit 3 after what AP calls it, Nash, <laughs> AP calls it National Income and Price Determination, okay? Um, first thing I want to kind of talk about when we enter this unit, Unit 3 right here, is that we've got this thing called Y equals national income, NI equals real GDP. Remember, real GDP is what we produce. It's the total value of what we produce. And of course, the total value of what we produce determines our national income, right? So the total value of what we produce determines our income. We've been saying that since day one of class. And we're gonna use this symbol Y. So I just want you to understand that I'm, I'm not actually gonna say national income all the time. I'm probably gonna more often say real GDP, okay? As I start to talk about this model, which is what we're gonna focus on in this video. So I just wanna be, be very clear that when we hear national income, equate that with real GDP, that those are synonymous for us. Once again, the value of what we produce determines our national income. In this video, okay, I'm calling this the ASAD model part one, simply an introduction to the ASAD model. In future videos, I'm going to talk about AD and I'm going to talk about AS separately and then eventually I'll put them back together. But here at the beginning, I just want you to see them together in this graph, okay? You all all read about this graph, okay? Where we left off, you were reading about this model in unit three. Um, First, the vertical axis. What are we measuring vertically? We're measuring the price level. Remember, it is super important. You never put price right there. You need to put price level. Price, when we put price, that harkens back to the supply and demand graphs that only looked at a single product, okay? All the way back in unit one, we're looking at tennis balls or tennis rackets or something like that. It is super important that you always remember to put price level. Krugman actually puts aggregate price level. It doesn't matter from an AP standpoint whether you put APL or just PL. Price level is an aggregate measurement. What is it measuring? It's measuring the total, well, it's measuring the prices of all final goods and services, okay? It's basically just an aggregate measurement. What I, can, what I say is the weighted average of all prices of all final goods and services, right? So it's a single measurement, which is a weighted average of all prices of all final goods and services. Remember that word weighted simply means that we don't put in a single Coca-Cola, can of Coca-Cola, and a single, uh, say, Ford um, Explorer into the model. We say, okay, how many cans of Coca-Cola were created, were produced? Okay, how many Ford Explorers were produced? Of course, there were more cans of Coke than Ford Explorers, and so we weight um, each of those products according to how much of each of those products we make when we come up with this single measurement, this aggregate measurement of prices in the economy. But when we look at this, that's what it's doing. It's measuring the price level in the economy at large, in the macro economy. Over here on the horizontal axis, I put a lot of stuff and not even really the stuff we're going to put at the very end. Eventually, we'll just start labeling the horizontal axis real GDP, but not here in part one. It's really important to understand that what we're measuring here, okay, is a bunch of stuff. We're measuring aggregate demand, which is total spending. We're measuring aggregate supply, which is total production. And it's actually kind of important to understand what is the unit of measurement, which is dollars that have been adjusted for inflation, okay? So anytime you think of this axis, the horizontal axis, what I want you to understand is there's a measurement. It's a monetary measurement, a monetary value is what we've got right here, okay? Like right here in the model, and, and by the way, we're going to have a little break in our model. We're not actually going to start all the way at zero dollars. We might start right here at, say, 16 trillion dollars, and then there'll be 17 trillion, 18 trillion, 19 trillion, 20 trillion, 21 trillion for the U.S. economy. So what we've got here is we've got uh, dollar measurements, dollar measurements of the total demand for domestically produced goods and services. Dollar measurements for the total supply of domestically produced goods and services. 
So we've got a dollar measurement of the total demand for domestically produced goods and services and a dollar measurement of the total supply of domestically produced goods and services. Now, where those two things end up meeting up together, that equilibrium point, is going to determine y sub zero, which is what we would call our equilibrium real GDP. And I'm going to explain that in just a second. But y zero is our equilibrium real GDP. Remember, once again, I'm using y. Y is national income, and it is real GDP. These three things are 100% synonymous, OK? So here's kind of how it works. If the price level was, let's say, not right here, but down here, so I'll put a price level right there, and I'll just put it zero for right now. If I draw that across, at that price level, this horizontal distance up to this dot hitting that curve would be our aggregate supply. What I will often refer to that is our total production of goods and services, because that's what aggregate supply is so important that we get past the jargon and refer to something that refer to it as something we understand which is total production that's what aggregate supply is now at this price level this horizontal distance right there that horizontal distance right there is aggregate demand okay that aggregate demand is our total spending our total spending now of course what would happen if that was the case this was the dollar amount. Remember, we could even bring that down and say, hey, there's a dollar amount. And this horizontal distance, we can correspond with some dollar amount. Remember, the horizontal distance corresponds to a dollar amount. Okay, if this was our total production measured in dollars, okay, which had been adjusted for inflation, and this was our total spending, well, if we're spending more than our total production, what would happen? Well, inventories would go down and the price level would start to go up. We would begin to produce more and we would begin to spend less, and we would, of course, converge on that E sub zero. Also, okay, very, you know, um, similarly, if that was the price level, I draw this right across my graph, this horizontal distance right to there, I'm now hitting the AD curve, that would be our aggregate demand at that price level. More importantly than saying aggregate demand, though, is total spending, because we can understand that concept a little easier. Total spending, this is our total spending in the economy, this horizontal distance all the way to right here would be our total production. We would be producing more than we were spending. And so what would happen? Inventories would begin to go up, prices would go down, and as prices went down, our total spending would increase and our total production would decrease and we would converge right there to that equilibrium. So what's happening at that equilibrium? At the equilibrium, total spending is equaling total production. And that is what we call our equilibrium real GDP. That is our equilibrium real GDP. So now I'm going to change this from Y0, okay, to YE, YE, our equilibrium real GDP. Y equals real GDP. YE is our equilibrium real GDP. Price level E, equilibrium price level. That's just a really quick introduction to this graph. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in.